Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Isha Datar, and today I'm going to be talking about animal products made without animals, which Andrea mentioned a little bit in her presentation. So I'm with New Harvest, and New Harvest is a nonprofit organization advancing breakthroughs in cellular agriculture. You may not have heard of cellular agriculture before, and I'll explain what that is later, but it is related to creating animal products without animals. So before we get to that, I'd like to point out all the problems associated with animal agriculture. Actually, first I'm gonna talk about how great they are. <laughs> um, so animal products are amazing, and there are things that you can do with animal products that you just can't do with plant-based products. So think about the functionality of dairy proteins or milk proteins. You can make yogurts that are creamy, you can make these stretchy cheeses, um, you can do all these exciting things with frothing and creaminess that you couldn't do with plant proteins, at least not with one plant protein across the board. Or think about egg proteins and how you can make these fluffy cakes and fluffy meringues, but also these nice custards. Or muscle proteins and all the things that they can do in terms of uh, functionality, in terms of holding fats and water together, but also in terms of umami flavors that are very difficult to achieve with uh, plant-based products unless you use fermentation. So animal products are very amazing, but there's a lot of problems associated with them. One of them is that they ruin the environment. So this is an aerial photo of a feedlot in Texas, and each one of those tiny little dots that looks like a poppy seed is a cow. And all of the runoff from this feedlot causes this massive algal bloom in an area of water nearby. And we don't really think about the impact of raising animals, but it is so massive. We actually use one third of all ice-free land on the planet to raise animals, which is completely too much to be creating such inefficient uh, calories. Um, the other problems with animal agriculture is that the way we do it is very, very unsafe. So this is an image of chickens that had to be culled in order to try and contain a bird flu. And these kinds of bird flus and animal flus are happening more and more often, and that's because animal agriculture is becoming more and more intense. And as you can imagine, when we have animals packed in very, very close environments, you have the perfect breeding ground for disease, where avian flus, which used to be quite mild and you know, not too dissimilar from our flus, have an opportunity to become very virulent and very pathogenic, which means very deadly. And lastly, the biggest problem is that animal products come from animals, and animals are usually raised in environments like this. And yes, it's great to think about animals that are raised on nice farms outside, but that is a very, very small fraction of where our animal products come from. And so as you, as you look at this, this is actually not too bad of a farm. Um, it's not amazing, it's not clean, it's not unsafe. Sorry, it's not safe. <laughs> so our thinking is, what if the farm looked like this? So this is, I suppose, a beer farm. This is a, uh, the Sam Adams Brewery just outside of Boston. And in these huge stainless steel tanks, you have food being transformed by living cell cultures. They're taking carbohydrates in, and they're transforming it into beer or into other kinds of fermented products. And these are very safe, sterile conditions. And the people who work here, we perceive as artisans and craftspeople. And they are microbiologists. They are people who are monitoring these cultures and making sure that everything is happening as it should. And also, because these are biological processes, you know, not every batch can be completely identical. And sometimes batches are contaminated. But that's just part of what working with cultures is like. An important thing to point out in this farm is that there are people touring it, and you're allowed to come in, take photos, sample things, which is not really allowed in factory farms and is becoming more and more something that is illegal in factory farms. So I believe that this farm is possible with cellular agriculture. And what cellular agriculture is, is the farming of agricultural products from cell cultures. So New Harvest focuses on creating these products and creating animal products, but you could be using cells to produce plant-based products too, like flavors and fragrances. So this is not actually a futuristic scenario that we can think of. Uh, New Harvest is building these things right now. So these are all real 
products that were made without animals. And that is a meringue made with um, egg whites that were created in a fermentation process using yeast. And it, like, it is molecularly the exact same ovalbumins that are found in egg whites. And so they whip up into meringues, they bake into cakes, they do all the same things that egg white proteins do because they are egg white proteins. <laughs> Um, this is milk that was made without cows, also made through a yeast fermentation process, and it has all the same functionality that milk has. So it can, it can froth and foam and mix into your, to your coffee. And this was a beef hamburger that was made without cows. This was not a fermentation thing. This was where we took muscle cells from a cow and grew it up in a sterile scenario and was able to produce the exact same meat that you would have in front of you, but process to how it got to you was different. So I wanted to focus on two of the products that we're advancing. The first of is this cell cultured meatball. Uh, this was created by Memphis Meats and debuted last week, so you may have seen something about it. Um, this cell cultured meatball is the exact same meat, <laughs> I'm going to reiterate, um, but it came from cell cultures instead of from a slaughtered animal. Something that I thought was really cool that Memphis Meats did was they tested for bacterial contamination. So they swabbed their meatball, and then they went to a grocer, found conventional meat, and then found organic meat, which is raised without antibiotics, and swabbed that as well, and looked for what kind of bacteria was growing on those samples. So as you can see, cultured beef and cultured pork are a lot safer in terms of microbial contamination than conventional or organic beef and pork. I also wanted to show you this slide of what muscle tissue looks like under the microscope. So muscle cells are kind of different cells. So usually a cell has only one nucleus, but when you're growing a muscle cell, you grow this muscle fiber, which is what we're actually consuming. And the muscle fiber is a, con is a conglomeration of a bunch of muscle cells that have been packed together. So muscle fiber actually has lots of many lots of different nucleuses in one fiber. So as we can see under the microscope that cultured meat is the same as meat from an animal. So what you're consuming is exactly the same thing. So in the context of me talking about how meat is the same thing, I wanted to point out what uh, the status quo for creating meat is today. So this was a chicken in 1950, and this is a chicken from 2008. And this research was done at the University of Alberta where I did my uh, undergrad. And this chicken from 2008 was not created through invasive genetic techniques. This chicken was created just by choosing which two chickens to breed with one another. So it's selective breeding. And you can see how a process which is not you know, scientifically intense can create such intense outcomes. So when we think about creating these brewery scenarios where we're creating meat in a big bioreactor, you have to realize that the, the status quo is that we are also creating big bioreactors, but those bioreactors are living creatures. This is the future that we'd like to build, one where we take a small sample from an animal, uh, grow those cells up in a sterile condition, and then have the exact same burger that we're familiar with at the end. The second product I wanted to highlight was the milk, because milk is a little bit different from meat in the way that you create it, because you create it through this yeast fermentation process. The way milk is made right now, you have to artificially inseminate cows, keep them in a lactating state for the entire time that they produce milk, and then deal with all the contamination and problems that are associated with getting milk from mother cows, and that's how milk is made. The way we want to make milk is use a yeast that has been designed to produce milk proteins, grow it up in a brewery type scenario and have milk at the end. The thing that's very important about this milk is that it's not an alternative, which is I guess is the theme of my discussion, is we're not creating something that's different. We're creating something that's same, the same, what's different is the process and how we got there. So unlike nut milks, um, this milk can become yogurt, this milk can become cheese, this milk can become all the things that dairy milk can become. And what is so exciting to me about this kind of 
new era of creating food is the culinary opportunity that's associated with it. So if we think about the very, very first time we ever used biotechnology in history, it was when we started fermenting foods. It was when we started making beer and bread and cheese. And before we started fermenting foods, before we started using biotechnology, there was just one milk. And we could have never looked at that one milk and thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be great if this milk was solid, a different color, stinky, could melt, could do all these weird things. We could have never fathomed cheese just looking at milk. But now we have hundreds and different, maybe thousands of different types of cheeses, which all have this regional aspect to it, which are all created with different living microorganisms. So what are the culinary opportunities that can arise from creating cultures and introducing cultures in a different way from fermentation? What about using cultures to create the actual foods themselves? What kind of new foods can we not even fathom today, like cheese from milk, can we produce with new cellular agriculture cultures? And so as I conclude this presentation, I just wanted to point out that over history, you know, people might consider this cultured food thing to be a real radical revolution in producing food. But what I think is that it's actually quite an evolution of how we produce food. We have slowly moved along towards higher levels of control, more efficiency, better ways of producing things. If we move to an era of cell cultivation, not only will we be doing things in a more controlled way, we'll also be doing it in a way that's much more sustainable, much more humane, and much safer. If you're interested to find out more, please visit our website. Thank you very much.